especially these two. A ship there is, and she sails the sea. She's loaded deep, as deep can be, but not so deep as the love I'm in. I know not if I sink or swim. The water is Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Phil Papineau. I am a pastor in the area, and it's an honor for me to come and just to share these moments with you as we reflect back on Steve's life and just celebrate his life. On behalf of Barbara, Megan, Michael, Lindsay, thank you. Thank you for being here and showing your love towards them, your love of Steve. I know that they appreciate your attendance today so very much. Let me just say this, they will never get over this. They won't. But with your help, with your love, with your support, with your friendship, they will make it through this. So on behalf of the whole family, let me just say a huge thank you to each of you. We're gonna be hearing from several people today, friends and family of Steve's, and to start off today, Tom Cox is going to come and he is going to share. Tom? For those who don't know me, my name is Tom Cox, and I'm really a, a life friend of Steve's. For the 50 plus years that I've known Steve, I have to say that the one thing that is really ingrained in me is his smile. If you look at the pictures, his smile is, is, is really what made him a person. And I have to say, I myself, I call it a grin. He always has that grin. And he's had it his whole life. To me, it represents confidence, strong character, happiness, and a person that really enjoys life. Steve is all those things. He was successful at everything he did, in school, in work, and an incredible family. He loved life, and he loved every day, and expressed and always had an incredible amount of energy, more than most people do in a week. Growing up, I spent all my summers with Steve. At times, I wondered if we were ever gonna grow up, but we did. We spent our summers sailing together, playing tennis, and eating lunch every day, pretty much, together. Usually at his house, eating snack bar cake. If they didn't have that, we would go to our house. But that was rare. His milk mustache is still clear in my mind. He taught me how to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> with one <laughs> I taught him how to open a bottle of beer with his teeth. <laughs> we each had our talents. And yes, I still have my teeth. 
He beat me in sailing. I beat him in tennis. But really, to be honest, it should go like I beat him in tennis and he beat me in everything else. Steve was good at everything. I quickly learned that it wasn't all that bad being second to Steve. As a matter of fact, third or fourth wasn't bad either. We were two blonde-haired kids <laughs> running around the shore, which is what we call in Beach Haven or in New Jersey. We were either getting into trouble or we were getting out of trouble. But in the end, it was all innocent fun. Whether it was sailing, tennis, water skiing, frisbee golf, playing Yahtzee at his house, or drinking orange soda out of Princeton tennis ball cans, or going to the beach, we always had fun. As a matter of fact, sometimes too much fun. Speaking of that, one summer we, we both actually worked in a liquor store. <laughs> but I'm going to withhold those stories for now. For most of our younger years, we were actually the same size. Then one summer we came to the shore, and Steve was actually three inches taller than me. The next summer, I was three inches taller than him. <laughs> Why I ended up taller than Steve, I have to say that I've always looked up to him. Not only as a friend, but as a very successful person, a caring person, and a really great person. When I think of Steve, I think of a happy person that enjoyed life, and someone that spent his life leading without even trying because he was a true leader. I should mention my definition of a leader is someone that has a positive impact on people and makes people feel good about themselves. Steve did that with every person he met. And I feel honored and grateful to have experienced that for most of my life. He meant a lot to a lot of people. He touched and impacted everyone in a very personal way. Look at his family, Barb, Megan, Lindsay, and Michael. They are all a great example of him. They are all very successful. On a personal note, I want, to, I want to say that Steve drove me to be a better person. And he did that just by being himself and an incredible friend. He has impacted a lot of people in a very positive way. And that is the reason for the grin. The grin is something that he has every right to take with him. He earned it. But I have to say that it will certainly live on with me and probably most of you. That's how I will remember Steve Crow. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ted Downs, and uh, I'm going to be doing a short poetry reading, but I tend to choke up when I cry, so you might only get half. <laughs> um, this is called The Measure of a Man. Not how did he die, but how did he live? Not what did he gain, but what did he give? These are the things that measure the worth. Of a man is a man, regardless of birth. Not what was his station, but how did he heart? And how did he play his God-given part? Was he ever ready with a word of good cheer? To bring back a smile, 
to banish a tear. Nala was his church. Nala was his creed. But had he befriended those really in need? Not what did the sketch in the newspaper say? But how many were sorry when he passed away? These are the things that measure the worth of a man as a man, regardless of birth. Thank you. I first met Barbara and Steve in 1997 when they moved to Lafayette, California and came to enroll their children in Happy Valley School where I was the principal. The minute they walked into the office with these winning smiles and talked so lovingly about their children, I knew that this was one special family, and that absolutely proved to be true. They gave so much to the school. When Michael, the last of the Grove children, graduated from Happy Valley, it was such a sad day. I'd known these people for seven years and seen them almost daily as they dropped off their kids or picked up their children, chaperoned field trips, helped in the classroom, helped with parents' club. I knew I would greatly miss them. Then my husband and I joined Insolo Yacht Club, and there and behold was the Grove family again, and I was thrilled to reconnect with them. Megan, Lindsay, and Michael were all in the junior sailing program became excellent sailors. They became instructors in the program, and so many of the students look up to them. Steve was a great model, role model for all these youth sailors, as he was always so nice and so positive, and he had this amazingly <coughs> positive effect on everyone who was involved in the program. Many of these sailors went on to sail for colleges all around the country. Steve and Barbara grew the Ensenal Junior Sailing Program into one of the premier programs on the Bay. They were a dynamic team. Steve had a huge impact, not just at Ensenal Yacht Club, but on youth sailing all around the Bay. He was a principal race officer for all Bay Area youth sailing. He represented our yacht club at youth sailing, and he also was involved in interscholastic sailing. I never knew Steve to be down. He was always up and positive with that big smile. He worked behind the scenes and asked for zero credit. He was a man of great integrity. He would do anything for his children and was so proud of each of them. But he was not only supportive of his children, supportive of all the junior sailors. He found joy in their accomplishments and he was always ready to sing their praises. He was a true gentleman and I am honored to have known him, forever grateful that he was a part of my life. He was also a huge part of Insula Yacht Club and as a former president of Insula Yacht Club, on behalf of all the former Commodores and presidents, I would like to acknowledge all that Steve has done for this club. He's an amazing man, left a lasting legacy for Insnow Yacht Club. Not only with this premier program, but in the hearts of all the junior sailors and in the hearts of everyone who knew him. We're going to miss him. Thank you. The uh, Parable of Immortality. I am standing upon the seashore. The ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and I watch until at last she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sea and sky come down to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she goes. Gone where? <clears throat> Going from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and masked and hull and spar as she was when she left my side, and just as able to bear <clears throat> her load of living freight 
to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, when someone at my side says, there she goes, there are other eyes watching her coming, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes. <clears throat> Steve Grove is quite simply the best man I have ever known. I'm deeply honored and privileged to have had him as my best friend for 39 years. I'm also especially proud to be Michael's godfather. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Steve Grove didn't care much about what he got, at least materialistically. He was not driven by glamour or possessions. He was defined by what he gave to others, emotionally, professionally, and personally. Among his greatest gifts were the following, the inspiration and encouragement he constantly gave to others, especially his children, Megan, Lindsay, and Michael. The leadership and guidance he provided to those with whom he worked. The patience and skill with which he instructed and nurtured young sailors. The loving care he showered on his wife, his children, and those close to him. But the best gift he gave to us, as Tom Cox said, was that winning smile he flashed so easily to everyone with whom he came in contact with. It just made you feel welcome, included, important, and truly appreciated. It was all these wonderful qualities and attributes that made you want to be around Steve, and it made you want to give something back to him. And he did get plenty back in terms of respect, admiration, affection, support, care, and love from his friends from high school, many of whom came here today, from his fraternity brothers in college, also who came to honor him today, from his IBM coworkers, from his colleagues and students at the Yacht Club, from his doctors and wonderful nurses who attended to him. But most of all, he got so much back from his wife and his children. Steve's family was the most important part of his life. Nothing made him happier than when he was able to provide some fatherly advice, physical comfort, and moral support. Steve's family was the center of his universe, and they revolved around him like planets around the sun. A sun that radiated warmth, enlightenment, and constant nourishment. His marriage to Barb was the most loving, supportive, and caring relationship I have ever witnessed. Barb was the highlight of Steve's life, as he was for her. The care, love, and devotion that Barb has exhibited throughout the years has been exemplary. However, the constant care and concern devoted by Barb over this past year has been nothing short of extraordinary. Steve and Barb surely embody the true meaning of marriage in sickness and in health. His children, Maggie, Megan, Lindsay, and Michael have exhibited the same devotion, caring, and extraordinary support as the central members of Team Grove. They have all shown incredible courage, grace, determination, and fight. They got that fight from their father and their mother and their grandfather, Henry, of blessed memory, and their grandmother, Joan. It is so fitting that this service is held here at Ensenal because it holds such a special place in the hearts for the Grove family. The passion of the Groves were always for each other and for Salem. And this place brought them together in such an exceptional setting. 
I met Steve when our freshman hall at Bucknell University. He is one of the few people one could ever label the description of someone who is larger than life itself. Steve Grove was a tough fighter. He never gave up. His competitiveness, desire, and fortitude were unparalleled in sailing, in business, and in life. One example of Steve's diverse strength was his co-production of a play that our fraternity put on every year to raise money for charity. The play was a satirical reproduction of a Broadway play that was rewritten to take place at Bucknell. Steve was, of course, the star of the play <laughs> and loved to perform on stage. The play that Steve and his close friend David Pohl present here today, the play that they produced was how to succeed in business without really trying. But that title did not reflect how Steve Grove approached the way he lived, because he always tried so very hard. In fact, he was the most competitive person I have ever met. Perhaps the best example was how hard he fought his cancer. It was so difficult to see Steve and his family endure the pain, suffering, and life-altering sickness that confronted Steve this past year. However, he never gave up, regardless of whatever curveball the disease threw at him. Simply the toughest man I've ever been privileged to meet. When he received his diagnosis, Steve told us not to despair. He said that he'd already been gifted with several lifetimes worth of good fortune, so there was no room for self-pity. He told me that Luke Gary captured his feelings perfectly in his farewell speech to baseball fans when he said, you've been reading about the bad break I got, yet today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Steve dealt with his health-related issues like he dealt with life, with dignity, a keen sense of awareness and intelligence, and unwavering integrity. He inspired us by the example he set for his lovely family, his friends, and everyone that gathered to him. He reflected the true qualities of a true leader, that is, someone who leads by the example he sets for others. Steve loved music, and he loved to share his favorites with his family and close friends. For instance, last October, he prepared a CD that he gave to his friends in Philadelphia. Included was Billy Joel's song, only the good die young. How absolutely true and prophetic, but so incredibly unfair. The lasting legacy of Steve Grove is a man who loved people and genuinely cared for them as a husband, as a father, as an employer, colleague, and sailing instructor. But most of all, as a kind, decent, and loving friend. He changed each of our lives immeasurably for the better. Steve, wherever you are up there, you've left behind the respect, admiration, and affection of not only those assembled here today, but almost everyone you've ever met. The last time Jim and I saw you in March, it was raining when we left and we saw a rainbow. You see, we here at Team Grove have a thing about rainbows. It was as if the skies were crying tears of sadness. But today the sun is shining and you have found the peace and serenity you so rightfully deserve. Your struggle is over. You fought a long and hard battle and now in keeping with your beloved Philadelphia football team, it's time for you to soar like an eagle. We're so incredibly proud of you and so thankful to have known you. Steve will miss you in so many ways. We'll miss your inspiration, your generosity, your wisdom, your support, and your unconditional love. We will cherish our thoughts of you for the rest of our days and will honor your memory forever. 
For me personally, I will cherish the memory of that wonderful and infectious smile. I know for sure that for all of us, every time we think of you, we will smile back and remember you with dignity, admiration, and unbridled affection. We love you, Steve. Rest in peace. This time I'd like to invite Barbara, Megan, Lindsay, and Michael. And they're gonna come and share. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, first of all, as many of you are aware, the person in this family who always stood up here at this podium, easily and eloquently, was Dad. So to fully put into words how we're feeling, or how, we, how much we love Dad is, is not going to be possible. But we're able to stand up here right now because of the love and support from this wonderful and powerful community. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how deeply we appreciate and have felt your love, support, and generosity this past year and especially this past week. The rallying around our family has been hugely humbling and it comforts us to know that Dad was able to see and feel this incredible love and support for both him and our family during this past week and year. We're convinced that this gave him more strength to fight harder and longer. From making Dad broth every week, to flying back and forth across the country to lift his and our spirits, to giving him acupuncture and helping him meditate, helping us research and implement the best diet possible and adapting it to his symptoms, to stepping up and leading volunteer efforts at the Junior Sailing Program, to making and sending care packages, to bringing us meals, um, to making dad inspirational good luck videos, Um, to sending cute animal videos and funny clips. To making blankets, to surprise deliveries, to hugs, the list goes on and on. Your love and gener generosity has floored us and given us such strength. We love you and we thank you so much. You are all an integral part of Team Grove and always will be. Uh, we'd now like to turn it over to Michael to say a few more words about Dad. I remember in kindergarten class at Happy Valley Elementary School, we were asked who our hero was. And to this day, that's been the easiest question I've ever had to answer in school. It's my dad. My whole life, I wanted to be like my dad in every way. I wanted to look like him, act like him. Talk like him. The list goes on and on. In my eyes, he was the perfect human being. And looking back now, I don't think that was a very childish opinion. When I was applying to Naval Academy, my parents asked me why I wanted to go there. And my answer was simple. I said I wanted to be a leader. But what I really wanted meant was, oh, I want to be more of a dad. He's the best leader I've ever had the honor to meet, and he was the leader of this family, this team. To be a great leader, you have to have three attributes, competency, courage, and compassion. And my dad had all three in abundance. Competency. No matter what aspect of life it was, my dad showed that he was prepared to do his best. One thing that's a running joke in our family is his love for Microsoft Excel. <laughs> Whether, is it, whether it was as important as a business presentation or as minor as a vacation packing list. <laughs> My dad made a spreadsheet. And as much as we like to laugh at it, it was just another example of how organized, thorough, and prepared he always was. He showed us that no job was too small to be done the right way. My dad was also the most competitive person I've ever met. 
Anyone who has competed against him will tell you that he had an unmatched will to win and an extreme mental toughness. Whether it was sailing, golf, or ping pong in our backyard, my, my dad made sure I knew he was the best. <laughs> His competitive spirit kept him from ever letting me win. He taught me that I would have to earn any victory in life the hard way, and that was a lesson I'll never forget. And I'm sure that he's way too proud of the fact that I never beat him in a round of golf. His work ethic, preparation, and competitive spirit led him to be successful in so many aspects of his life, although because of his humble nature, he'd be the last to tell you. Whether it was in the office at IBM, or out on the water set in a perfect race course, my dad vigorously pursued excellence in every aspect of his life. He was always the most competent person in the room. Courage. Despite his extreme desire to win, my dad prioritized honesty and integrity over everything else. He would be the first to call himself out on a foul if he was sailing, and he'd make sure we would do the same. During any situation, he had the moral courage to do the right thing, not the easy thing, and that was something I've always admired. Witnessing our father bravely battle cancer last year was inspiring beyond words. If you ask any of the nurses or doctors at the Stanford Hospital, they will tell you that they've never seen anyone fight as hard as our, our dad fought. As the chemotherapy was beating him down, and he was in pain, he kept his quick-witted sense of humor and positive energy and stayed true to who he was. Cancer didn't beat him because he had the courage to fight back and live his life his way. He was the bravest man I've ever met. Compassion. Anyone who has had the fortune of being a guest at one of my dad's parties or get-togethers or at an national barbecue know that he took his job as a host very seriously. He made sure that everyone, every detail was taken care of, he made sure that everyone had a drink in their hand and the perfect music was playing because he wanted everyone to have a good time. He truly cared about his friends and made everyone feel included as part of the family. His compassion for his fellow man extended beyond his close friends and guests. At our grandfather Henry Gross' funeral a few years ago, my dad shared a life lesson that he learned from Henry while working a summer job with him. He noticed that our grandfather would treat every employee with the same respect, whether it was the janitor or the CEO. My dad embraced that philosophy and demonstrated that every day. Everyone he met he treated with respect and never thought about what they could do for him. He was a warm-hearted and compassionate man. So as we look at the three attributes of competency, courage, and compassion, it is clear that Steve Grove fits the bill. The four of us have lost our leader, but as any great leader does, he's made his team strong. And his light will continue to shine through all of us. And in his words to us, he wants us to sail on. Thank you. Beautiful words from all of you. I am honored and humbled to stand at this podium that Steve spoke from so many times. Tucked away in the Old Testament book of Psalm is a rather obscure passage, and it's a poem. In Psalm chapter 90, the words are written, and I just want to read one line of the poem. It simply says this, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's it. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And for Steve, he was born on Tuesday, June 23rd, 1959, and passed on Wednesday, July 20th, 2016. Teach us to number our days. For Steve, his days numbered 20,848. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of days, but yet on another front, not near enough days. Because when you're with a person like Steve, or when you have him in your life, you just want the days to continue to go on and on and on endlessly. But Steve was born into a, uh, a, a world that we're almost unfamiliar with now. Do you realize the year that Steve was born, you could buy a new home for $12,000? The average income of the average American in 1959 was $5,010 annually. A new car was $2,000. A ticket to the movie was a dollar. A loaf of bread was 20 cents. 
The year Steve was born, Alaska and Hawaii joined the Union. The film Ben-Hur premiered in New York. The Sound of Music came out that year. So many different things happened. And of course, 1959 was the year that IBM shipped the transistor-based IBM 1401 mainframe for the very first time. And into this world in Philadelphia, Steve was born. And he was destined to make an impact with his entire life. We have heard so many beautiful stories and antidotes about Steve's life already. And I just want to take just a moment and focus on one small area of Steve's life. You see, in the New Testament book of Galatians, there is a verse that reads this way. It says, For you have been called to live in freedom. Use your freedom to serve one another in love. And I think if there was a hallmark in Steve's life, that was it. To serve one another in love. You see, his life can be summarized in that one word, service. He gave of himself to make the lives of other people better. What an incredible legacy Steve leaves behind for all of us. He was always smiling, always happy, and ever humble. He was funny and quick-witted. He was extremely confident, but never cocky. That's who Steve was. When each of you look at Steve's life and you remember Steve, I can almost guarantee every single one of you remembers an act of service that Steve performed. See, our world today is, is hurting for people like Steve, people that will serve for the betterment of other people. That's what Steve did. That's what his life was about. And I think the greatest single example, without a doubt, of Steve's service sits right over here, Teen Grove. Each of you are extremely blessed to have had a dad and a husband who loved you so much that he gave everything of himself for your betterment. That's who he was. And he always did it with a smile on his face. He was always willing to help the kids, especially if it had to do with editing or if it had to do with a packing list, of course, on an Excel spreadsheet. That was his way of saying, I love you, I care about you, I want the best for you, go and work for it, and I will help you. When I was talking with the family the other day, we were just sharing some of the stories, and it's always interesting to hear the stories of children when they reflect on their father. And one little comment that Lindsay made, she said that he was a surrogate father to many of their friends. In other words, he was the go-to dad. He was the dad that you were proud to introduce your friends to. That's who he was. He was a man who wanted to give of himself to make this a better world. I had written down here part of a quote that was already spoken today of uh, Winston Churchill. Don't judge a person. You don't judge a person by what they get. You get you get to judge a person by what they give. And that's what Steve's life was all about. It was about giving. So in just a few moments, we're going to be dismissed. So what does Steve give you? Well, he gives you a couple of things. Number one, he gives you a ton of wonderful memories. Hold on to each one of those memories. Hold on to them. Those belong to you. Think of your good times that you had with Steve because that's what he leaves for each one of us. But not only that, I would hope that Steve would also leave within each one of us a little bit of his legacy. Why don't we walk around with a little bit bigger smile on our face? Why don't we try to think of ways in which we can help another person, maybe serving a young person? It may not be on a yacht. It might be with homework. But somehow, some way, give a little bit of yourself to somebody else 
help another person along. And in doing so, you show the greatest amount of honor and respect and dignity to the life that Steve Grove lived. And if we can walk away with that, we have each been touched by a rich life. Would you bow your heads? Father in heaven, we come to you today and we openly admit that we do not understand all of life's issues. We don't understand why someone that we love so much is taken away from us so early. But God, I just pray today for every family member, for every friend, for every business associate, for every yacht club member that's here, that somehow, some way, you would reach down and you would touch our hearts. And God, help us as we reflect on Steve's life to remember those wonderful memories and to pick up his legacy and to give a little bit of ourselves to other people the way that Steve did. God, I just pray that you would be with Barbara. Pray that you would wrap your arms around her and just give her the peace and the comfort she needs. Please do the same for Megan, for Lindsay, for Michael. God, be with them. Give them the strength that they need. And for all of us family and friends that remain as well, be with us. And again, help us to pick up Steve's legacy. And we will thank you for that. And we pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is my honor at this time to introduce Michael Andrews. And he is going to come and he is going to share a very special ceremony. Michael? Good afternoon. It's been my pleasure uh, to know Steve and Barb and uh, Megan and Lindsay and Michael through the club's junior sailing program that they've uh, contributed so tremendously much to. Um, I'm privileged to have been asked by Barb to lead you in observing Eight Bells for Steve today. Uh, eight Bells is a short ceremony, ceremony that signifies the end of a person's watch on earth. <laughs> For those not familiar, the passing of time aboard ship is reported through the ringing of the ship's bell. A day aboard consists of six four-hour watches, a third of the crew is tasked with standing watch twice a day in rotation. The ship's bell is rung every half hour, once for each half hour of the watch that has passed. The bell is rung, <coughs> the bell is rung once to denote, to denote the passing of half an hour, and twice in quicker su succession to, no, to denote the passing of an hour. For example, an hour and a half into a watch, the ship's bell is rung twice, followed by a pause, and then once more. At the end of a watch, the bell is rung eight times, four times with pauses, uh, twice, four times with pauses between. Please rise and join me in silence as I ring eight bells for Steve, signifying the end of his watch with and for us. Please stay standing afterwards. Thank you. This time we're going to ask that you follow the bagpiper and just go out onto the porch for the cannon ceremony. 